Cardi B may face battery charges. Summer tours are making some people cry and some people money. Billboard talks to Tim McGraw and takes you inside his exclusive performance. We catch up with Juanez and Michelle Buteau plays Never Have I Ever. Hey y'all, I'm Tetris and this is Billboard News. It's Tuesday, August 1st and we're starting things off with a Cardi B and Offset update. Offset says no, Cardi B actually didn't cheat on him, as people are saying she encouraged fans to splash her and she may face charges for throwing a mic back. Let me break it all down for you. She crazy, man. You might be crazy too. I'm crazy, but... Okay, there we go. We're crazy for each other. <laughs> Offset spoke to Angela Lee on her podcast about that post accusing Cardi of cheating, and he was just a little drunk and crazy in love. I look how me go here and there, you know? Okay. I was lit, and then we going back and forth, and I'm like, watch this. And, I, and it's like, she got, a, she got a crazy mind, but I love my wife at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And he even got honest on why he cheated and how the internet bringing it up is exhausting. When I did do that, like I was in a different space. I was young, I had just got married. I'm getting a lot of money. I was on different shit. Like I, I was on lean and shit too. Like right. I already done talked about that. They be trying to mess up my household mm -hmm. with cap and then bring up my past, and then I can't get past my past. So that shit ain't fair. Also in Cardi news, we have all seen the video of her throwing a mic at a fan after they threw a drink on her. But did she encourage it? Give me some Splash her down. Woo! That shit feel good. Put that shit in my pussy, bitch. Come on. <laughs> Earlier in the show, the Bodak artist may have wanted to be splashed, but later she thought a fan went too far. I said splash my pussy, not my face, bitch. <laughs> And that fan seemed to be sorry. Well, the mic bounced off that fan and hit someone beside her, and that person went to the Las Vegas Metro PD the next day to report the incident. Yikes, now she could face a battery charge. But as we continue to say, everybody just stop throwing stuff. Now it's time to take things around the world with some tour highlights from some of your faves. Taylor, Beyonce, BB, and Jungkook. These tours are making money and making everyone emotional. Oprah went viral posting from Beyonce's show in New Jersey. But she wasn't the only megastar in the audience. B gave a shout out to Madonna who soaked up the Renaissance tour since postponing her own. Meanwhile, Taylor Swift is about to end the U.S. leg of her Eras tour here in L.A., and TMZ reports she gave her equipment truck drivers an end-of-the-tour bonus to the tune of $100,000, meaning in total she sold out $5 million for the 50 drivers. Plus, she reportedly gave bonuses to a ton of other staff, too. Army got a treat during Jungkook's recent Inkigayo performance. His BTS bandmate V was in the wings watching him perform his Hot 100 number one seven. And fans captured the moment he came on stage to do some choreo. Finally over in London, BB Rexa got vulnerable with her audience when she noticed they were holding signs saying you are enough. You were trying to make a bitch cry. <laughs> She also addressed her breakup saying, I'm going to be at heaven tonight partying and looking for a new boyfriend. I don't know why I would look for a new boyfriend in a gay club, but you know, fluid. Time to talk about Tim McGraw. Not only did I get to see him live, he stopped by to talk tours. Yeah, hopefully I'm quick enough to dodge. <laughs> yeah. Tim McGraw announces his first stadium tour in years and warns fans to think twice about throwing things at him. He shared his thoughts when I sat down with him recently. People gotta stop and think that, you know, not only are you ruining the show for yourself and ruining the show for the artist, you're ruining the show for everybody else, especially if you hurt somebody. He also discussed the Miranda Lambert controversy. How does he feel about fans taking selfies during his show? I mean, I don't care if they're taking selfies. When people are filming the whole time, you're missing the experience a little bit because, you know, you're not watching the show. Tim just performed a standing room only show at LA's Whiskey A Go Go and even brought out legend Richard Marks to join him on stage. Richard Marks came out and sang with me. Dude, that was awesome. Yeah. Boy, he sings his tail off too. 
and still he looks like he's 30 years old. But yeah. <laughs> you guys are great. Yeah, he's, he brought a lot of energy to the stage as well. So it was a night to remember for sure. And announced his first arena tour in years set to kick off in March 2024. It's the first time we've been in arenas in a long time. The last arena we did was when Faith and I did this last Soul to Soul tour. It's probably going to be one of the biggest productions we've ever had. I so I'm pretty to excited to have all the bells and whistles and, and get on that stage and sort of figure, I'm trying to, I gotta get up there and figure out what to stay out of the way of with all the moving parts and everything. But that's the fun part is building a show, putting a set list together, getting the ebb and flow of what the music's gonna be, the lighting, the content, I get into all that stuff. Our full interview with Tim will be available later this month and you can catch new Billboard News interviews every Tuesday and Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time on our website and social. If you wanted to know a little more about Michelle Buteau, we played a little Never Have I Ever. Hey everyone, I'm Michelle Buteau and this is Never Have I Ever. Not with Mindy Kaling on Netflix. It's just a game because someone went to Kinko's. FedEx Express. Actually. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> FedEx Express. Okay. Have I ever lied to get out of a speeding ticket? No. With this face? Nope. I always say I just started my period and they just look at me silently like you did. Works every time. Have I ever dumped someone over text? No. I have never done that because I'm a responsible bitch and I feel like I can go somebody to their face. I have never paid for a comedy show and left because it was bad, but I have left comedy shows that I've been on because I don't need to see that bullshit. Have you ever overdrafted a bank account? What, how dare you? <laughs> How dare you? I got top titty me, back fat, and I got a balance of check? That's not fair. Have I ever lied about my age? Never, I'm proud. 45 from the waist up, 21 from the waist down. Bitch! Have I ever seen a ghost? Oh my God, I have. Where? No. See, these people, they wanna invoke the spirit and shit, and I gotta go home with it. Have I ever got skinny dipping? Yeah, but I call it plus size dipping. I actually went to the beach and then like, Two weeks later, I had a pearl under my titty. There was sand under my boob. I didn't know if you knew how it worked. Have I become a member of the Mile High Club? I'm a size 1820. I could barely get in the seat that I paid too much money for. Are you serious? I go into that bathroom and it's like I'm breastfeeding everything in the bathroom anyways. So no, we could barely find the hole when I'm in a bed. And the interviews keep on coming. We talked to one as. Hay un amigo mío que estuvo, estuvo muy cerca de todas estas escuchas y un día lo llamé y le dije, oye, estoy haciendo una canción que ya, que ya sé que se llama Canción Desaparecida y habla sobre este tema. Quiero que me contes más. Y me senté con él a escribir un poco más la letra y después invité a Mavilan, que es de Kid Do, uh -huh. eh, que hiciera el rap. Y es una canción pues, que es poderosa. Parece importante contar historias a través de las canciones, uh -huh. ¿cierto? Y encontré que eso era algo importante para hacer, sobre todo por la memoria. La memoria no se va, los recuerdos no se van, seguirán iluminando. Me dan ganas de llorar, me dan ganas de gritar, ¿quién se los está llevando? Y ahí entra, así a final del año, por ahí vamos a hacer una gira por Estados Unidos, tengo unas ganas tremendas. Ahorita en septiembre vamos a ir a, a Europa como tres semanas a tocar por varios países. Ok. Eh, vamos a ir a México en octubre. Y vamos a tocar en el Festival Cordillera en Bogotá, que también tengo unas ganas tremendas de estar ahí. Eh, vamos a ir a Ecuador la semana entrante. Bueno, tú sabes, siempre tocando. For the full interview, head to billboard.com. That's today's show. Come back tomorrow for an epic new cover star. And Nate Smith teaches us some hometown slang. <laughs>